Hey guys, Steve here at SKS Props. Today we're gonna to make a super simple dice tower. Welcome to the shop. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I'm coming back with lots more tips and tricks for prop and costume fabrication. Now in today's build, we're gonna be switching gears a little bit. We're going to be making a super simple dice tower all out of my HD foam, which of course you can find over at Blick Art Materials. Now the thing that's great about this, this is a project that I've wanted to do for a while. In fact, I made a prototype for this a long time ago, but I've finally gotten around to put it together. Now this video is not only gonna show you the steps that it takes to assemble all this, but I have free templates over in the description section. So be sure to download it, print it out, transfer it onto your phone and assemble it right along with the video. Now the thing that's also awesome about this is this is super simple, but it's a base structure in case you wanted to make it more elaborate. So I want you guys to look at this also as a challenge. I want you to look at this base structure and think about adding all kinds of additional details to it if you would like. Now we've got a lot to do to put this thing together, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing to do is print out and transfer the template that I've provided onto some 10 millimeter HD foam with a ballpoint pen or pencil. You will need to transfer the wall template onto the foam four times and one of those also needs to have the template for the door. The next step is to cut 45 degree bevels on the wall templates and you can do this one of two ways. Number one, you can use a utility knife. I would recommend to sharpen it first just so you have a nice clean cut. And you wanna make sure that your blade goes all the way through the surface into your cutting mat at a 45 degree angle. The second way to cut these pieces out, and of course my preferred method is to use my bandsaw. It's a fantastic tool to use because I can change the angle of the cutting plate to precisely 45 degrees. Once all the angles have been cut, I can put the plate back to zero and cut all the straight edges. I rough cut the door for the dice tower using a utility knife and I clean this up using a medium grit sanding drum on my Dremel rotary tool. It's time to start gluing all the walls together so I pull out some craft paper to protect my cutting surface. For the adhesive on this part of the build I'm using some weld wood contact cement. Now this is applied using some scrap foam that I had laying around. Now with contact cement you want to make sure to put it on a very thin layer and wipe off most of the excess because if it's too thick the glue will not dry properly. Now even though this isn't a costume or a prop, I still use my double adhesive method to assemble it, so I put a little bit of super glue in with the contact cement, so if one adhesive fails, the other one's there to back it up. You want to carefully line up the pieces and then firmly press them together. This will activate the contact cement to adhere to each side. Now of course if you don't have contact cement, you could put this project together using hot glue as well. I go ahead and attach the second wall just like the first. Now go ahead and take your template for the two shelves that'll be at the top of the dice tower. You'll notice both of these also have 45 degree bevels on one side. The first shelf is marked approximately three quarters of an inch from the top. This shelf is then glued into place using some Bob Smith super glue. The second shelf template is also transferred onto the 10 millimeter foam that has the 45 degree bevel and cut out with utility knife. The second shelf is marked on the interior of the tower approximately three inches from the top. Super glue is applied to the back and sides of this shelf and it is pressed into place. Now that the first and second shelves have been glued into place, you can move on to the third template for the lower shelf. Now this piece will have two 45 degree angles cut on either end. This will line up with the base and the back of the tower. The sides of it will be super glued. Once glue has been applied to this piece, carefully line it up with the base of the dice tower and the back of the wall. 
Now I grab the back tower just for a test fit to make sure that everything lines up exactly like it's supposed to. To adhere the back wall, more contact cement is applied to the 45 degree bevels. Once again, I'm being mindful not to have too much adhesive on there. I'm scraping a lot of it off so it has a nice thin layer. And just like before, a little dab of super glue is applied to the bevels and the sides of the shelf. Then carefully I seat the back wall to make sure that everything lines up in place and firmly press it all together. I test roll a couple of the die through the tower just to make sure that it's working properly and I notice they're catching a little bit on the sides from time to time, which I was anticipating so let's go ahead and make some shims for the interior. For the interior columns, I use some 15mm HD foam half round dowels. These are cut at an angle to match the lower shelf. This will help funnel the die through the lower gate. The other side of the tower is test to fit and also glued into place. These two columns do a great job making sure the die roll out the middle of the tower. The last piece that we need to fabricate for this tower is a wall that will trap the dice so they don't roll all over your gaming table. To do this, we're going to have a strip of 1 inch by 18 inch 10 millimeter HD foam. Once the strip has been cut to length, it is checked for fit and then marked on the side of the tower. Super glue is used to attach it to the sides. After that, the dice are rolled a couple of times to check for functionality, and it works great. This will be perfect for our next D&D meetup. So you guys can see the steps that it takes to put together a super simple dice tower. Now again, this is really, really simple design, but you could use this as a base to add a whole bunch of embellishments and details to it to make it a much grander piece. And if you guys want to do that, or if you're using HD foam, be sure to tag me on Twitter and Instagram because I love seeing your progress. Now hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos, and if you are, give them a thumbs up and be sure to share them with your friends and family. And until next time, thanks for stopping by.